In April 2023, Tulalip's Hebulb Cultural Center honored Matika Wilbur as her decade-long journey in creating Project 562, Changing the Way We See Native America, was published. Matika's book is an incredible treasury of stories, imagery, voices, and life lessons shared by Indigenous people she visited during her 600,000-mile, 50-state trek toward Native American rediscovery. Family, friends, supporters, and special guests gathered in the Hebel Cultural Center Longhouse in celebration of Matika's contribution to our collective Native people, past, present, and future. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hi. Welcome to the Hebel Cultural Center and welcome to the book signing and unveiling of Project 562, Matika Wilbur's very own. Uh, we're so happy to have you here with us tonight. My name is Michelle Hernandez. I'm the manager of the Hebel Cultural Center, and I am so grateful to have been part of this journey and to be here today for the work that is going to take place. Um, our ancestors said that all good things start with a prayer, so we have Natasha Hoven to bless us with the opening prayer. Oh, she will us Allah, Baltia, Slock Hail, friends and relatives. <laughs> we raise our hands to each and every one of you for being here this evening for traveling however far you travel. Thank you for coming here to celebrate with us. Um, and I want to thank Michelle for Michelle and Matika for asking me to be here to be able to help open up with a prayer. Let us pray. Creator, we give thanks for this day. Thank you for allowing everybody to arrive here safely. We ask you to continue to watch over those who might be joining us this evening. Today, we give thanks and gratitude for the journey that Matika has taken to visit all of our relatives, to share their story, to honor who they are, and to help teach everybody else in this world who our people truly are. We ask for special blessings over our elders, over our children, and those who are in need, those who are struggling. We also ask that this evening that you lay your hands on those who are mourning. Please carry their heavy hearts. We ask for special blessings to watch over everybody as we finish up this work with lots of thanks and gratitude. Amen. We have a really nice program for you all today, and we are going to be featuring our own Tulalip drummers and singers um, and some people who have come to bless our Floor and have traveled to be here. We'll first introduce our Tulalip drummers and singers and they will be bringing in the book and blessing it and welcoming, welcoming it in its home territory.
Shud, Stahope Shud, Stahope Shud, um, Shane Teeth Stuff. Hello everybody, my name is Shane McLean. I'm the Tulalip Youth Council Advisor. Um, just want to thank everybody for uh, coming in and being here to honor up Matika in that good way. Um, thankful for all the, uh, the prayers that were done before we came in and for all of our drummers and singers and all of our guests for being here to uplift this good work. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, travel with Matika for a few years on the road and um, it's really awesome and I'm really proud of her for all that, that good work that she does. Um, one of the cool stories that I have or that I felt like is like history in the making is uh, when we were out in Standing Rock, um, the Sheti Sakon was like the, the seven council fires of that the area of that land there. but. They put up a teepee that's like seven sizes. The teepee is just one teepee. And the last time that teepee was put up was at the Battle of Little Bighorn. So it's been over 138 years since that's happened. And we were there to witness that work and uh, be a part of that, that ceremony. And it was a uh, cool history. So I'm thankful that she's doing that and getting that history down, you know, because it's not how it used to be where we're able to. Um, pass down our histories orally as much, you know? So it's important to see it getting put down in books for our uh, future generations to be able to read and hear these things. And um, the other thing about that teepee being set up, the reason why it hasn't get put up in so long was that uh, one of the other tribes and nations, they were, uh, they sold out the other natives they were scouts for the U.S. government and ended up uh, getting a lot of the other tribes, the relative tribes, ended up getting killed. So there's a lot of bad history for that long. But when that got put up, it, it showed that, you know, no matter what happens, you know, even though the worst things that could be done to a person, those things could be forgiven and that we could still come together and uh, be good humans and be good relatives to each other. I'm just thankful for everybody for being here and all give the mic to our youth council but yeah thank you Matika and thank you everybody for being here and for Nancy too for you know <laughs> Nancy right here she would say but yeah thank you Errol Seed Studs to Hope Studs Wall Teach Lela Rose Valencia Seed Score Rose Charles Seed Kaya William Bridget Teach Sonda Hi, my name is Erin Valencia. I'm Stahobes. Rosemary Valencia is my mom, Rose Charles is my grandma, and William Burchett is my grandpa. I'd like to start this off by thanking Matika Wilbur for her deep dedication for this amazing journey of hers, starting off in 2012. This long mission of hers to photograph all 562 U.S. tribes to get a different look at indigenous people, as us indigenous people are one of the most underlooked people. Matika is changing that for us one step at a time. So thank you, Matika. You don't know how big of inspiration you are to the younger generation, more generations to come. Thank you for all your hard work. Hi, my name is Faith Valencia, and we just want to say thank you so much, and we are so proud of you, and we have some gifts for you. My name is Lily, I'm in ninth grade, and I just want to thank everyone for coming here, and um, 
being a part of this and hope you guys have safe travels on your way home. Uh, at this time, I would like to welcome Sage Andrew Romero, who came for this event from Big Pine, Paiu, and Taos, Pueblo. Sage is featured in the book on page 226. Sage Andrew Romero. Director of the nonprofit uh, Akamaya Culture Group, he has journeyed the globe several times over, but his work and home are in the precious and vast lands of the Paiute people. Okay. Do you want to say a few words? Sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, Manahu, Inani, and Sage Andrew Romero. My traditional name is Alapian Chuntai, which is Mountain Eagle Sings. Again, I'm of the Tuatai and the Tova Wahamatanuma. The Tuatai is the Taos Pueblo, and the Paiute is the Tova Wahamatanuma. And uh, I've known Matika for some years now. When she first started her journey, she came down to our community and uh, took our pictures. That was back in 2012, mm -hmm. around then. So we've been, you know, in touch since then, and uh, really honored to have been part of her project. And I recall thinking back then, when she's done, I want to make sure I go be there and share my dance for her in her honor for accomplishing such a task. And if you're familiar with the hoop dance, it's a, it's a medicine dance our people do as an offering to help with healing, to help people feel well. It's, it's, a, it's an offering dance that we do. So I feel it fitting that I'm able to share it with Matika and do it in her honor here in this place today in recognition of her accomplishment. So thank you, Matika. Tha. I got a uh, singer, a couple of the singers were going to sing me a song. Those gentlemen. <coughs> I think they're back there. Josh. <laughs> 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 <all> in. <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, while we're getting them, I'll tell you a little bit about the hoops. So the circle, the hoop, is a sacred symbol to many of our native people throughout uh, Turtle Island. And our people, the Tuatati, the people of the Red Willow, we dance with it and make shapes on our bodies. And each of those shapes represent creation. They represent animals, they represent clouds, plants, medicines, things that our people utilize to live. And it's telling the story of creation, so it's honored in that way. And as we're dancing, we believe you watch it, you get a good feeling in you. That's that medicine working within you. And if you have somebody in your life that's going through a hard time or sickness, think of them as you're watching this dance. And that medicine goes to them. So. I'm honored and happy to be able to share this dance with you. We call it the Talatona, and I'm going to do it for you all and for Matika's honor in a good way. Oh.
inspired by obviously her 562 project going to different communities and showcasing and showing our people in the best light possible. Uh, because representation is important and this book is the best form of representation for all of our communities. And here to talk about the work in the book and representation is Dr. Stephanie Freiberg. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I really want to start today by saying how honored I am to be here for this book launch. I have watched Matika. I am much more, I'm older than her. Um, but I have watched the development. I have interacted and had the opportunity to be in different spaces across the country with Matika. And to see the impact that she has had on not just Native people, but people broadly. And what I'm here today to speak to is the importance of cultural artifacts like this book for making change. Yes. So, yeah. so I'm going to build a connection to a really important person in history, James Baldwin. James Baldwin was a huge figure in the civil rights movement. A black scholar, someone who literally there are books written about the words that he said. And there is a quote that I want to share with you today that really speaks to what is happening here today. And in, in the Coast Salish way, you are witnessing this today. You are witnessing the launch of change. And so James Baldwin said, what white people see when they look at you is not visible. What they do see when they do look at you is what they have invested you with. To survive this, you have to dig down deep and impose who you are and force the world to deal with you, not with its idea of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in fact, James Baldwin often spoke not only about black Americans, but about Native Americans. He saw us in that play as being in the same place. And he very importantly understood the power of representation for humanizing people of color. And what we are talking about today is a book that is saying what you have invested us with, that is not who we are. This book is one step forward in saying that this is who we are. It's our words, our pictures, our imagery. And to, in all honesty, there is nothing more important in that battle, in that narrative out there than to change the way people see us. And we know in the work we do in my center that how people, what representations they hold in their mind influences whether they vote for policies that will impact our communities, yes, that yes. will better equity, that will change the future of our children and the many generations to come. And so we may today say this is one book, but this is a book that will live on for decades, potentially centuries. You look back at the word work of someone like Edward Curtis, who really, when you look at that photographer so well known, and yet did such a wrong yes. to indigenous yes. people. Yes. He did not photograph us for who we were. He photographed us the way we wanted to be seen. And what people don't often know is that he traveled around Indian country. He visited and he asked Native people to dress the way he saw them. So he went out to Plains country and had them dress like Southwest Natives. And he went to the coast and asked them to, to dress like Plains Indians. Those pictures you see when you search for Native people on Bing or Google or whatever search engine you use, that's what comes up. But you watch. I will say it today, going forward, this, this is what will show up. And it's some of the most beautiful, amazing photography. Um, I would decorate my house with it. It makes me feel pride and courage. 
It makes me feel hope for future generations, and it is therefore that I am so proud to stand here with my relative and my friend and to congratulate her on this amazing effort, accomplishment, <coughs> and to thank you for standing so proudly for our people. shame they put on me for being Native. I remember being teased, and, and I didn't have it as bad as my mom had it, or as bad as my grandma had it when she went to boarding school here. But I could feel it when I was young. And what I want for our people is for our children to be able to see themselves for the incredible young people that they are, so that they know that they feel deeply inside of them how loved they are. Our ancestors' wildest dreams. They tried to bury us. They didn't know we were seeds. <laughs> I heard a story when I was in Ho Chunk Nation, and they told me that they had that the women were the seed keepers in their society, and that when they wanted to, when the cavalry came and told them they had to relocate, the women in that society they swallowed their seeds so that they could retrieve them when they got there. Can you imagine? <laughs> Don't make us go digging, we will. <laughs> Found my paper. <laughs> this project started for me because of this community, because I was here working in Talela, and I was teaching at Heritage, and some of those students are here tonight, students of mine. Please raise your hands. There's more. <laughs> and they were so naughty. <laughs> and now they have to work with kids, and I love it. <laughs> and they were so great. 
so great. They gave me purpose and we shared laughter and tears and love and friendship and uh, we're still, you know, um, in this community together, and it feels like a real blessing. And I did this work for you. Because when I was teaching, I wanted a book that I could use to teach you from. How egregious that we should want books written by our own people for our own people. What a crazy idea. We lost a lot of young people. When I started high school, I started with 39 native kids, and two of us graduated. Two thirds of us have already gone on to the other side. And I'm not that old. I'm still in my 20s yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was praying with Urbana. Say hi, Urbana. Hello. <laughs> Urbana and I taught together. She used to say, You can't hit the kids. Katika, <laughs> <laughs> you have to come to school on time. You're the teacher. <laughs> I said, Sila will teach for me. <laughs> And um, <coughs> we wanted to make this, we wanted to make this curriculum so that we could go out and we could share it with our own people. And so it was this great big dream, right? I thought, well, if I raise the money, I'll do it. And then I thought, well, if I can make it through the first year, I'll keep going. Well, if I can make enough money to stay on the road, I'll keep going. And before I left for this project, we had ceremony. We put up the teepee, we prayed that Native American church in that way, you know. In the morning, we were bringing in the water, we were praying and asking permission to do this project. And in that moment, these flickers flew into the teepee and they circled us like that and they left a bunch of flicker feather for us, medicine feathers. They said, if you have the courage to walk the path, all the people will help you. And people always ask me, you know, how'd you get those Indians to talk to you? You know, like white reporters. <laughs> well, first of all, I don't show up empty-handed. I bring fish. <laughs> Second of all, I tell them why I'm doing this. We talk about how we love our community, how our children deserve to see themselves in a good way. We talk about how the education system is failing us. Yes, yes, yes. And they said, all right, you can take my picture. <laughs> I was in the Grand Canyon, you know. They said, hey, Matika, come down to the Grand Canyon to have a soup by. And I said, OK, how do I get there? They said, just walk in. I said, it's nine miles. <laughs> and he goes, OK, we'll just ride a donkey. I said, we ride canoes. <laughs> And they said, okay, take the helicopter. <laughs> Could you stop by Walmart on your way? <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so they're like, I said, how do I, how do, where do, how do I find the helicopter? Just make a reservation on Expedia. And they're like, no. You, okay, listen, take Route 66, drive down till you see a big boulder. It's an unmarked road. Go about 40 miles. And then you're going to see an old sign. It used to say, have a soup by this way, but now it's, there's no more paint on it. But you can tell it was a sign. Turn there. <laughs> <laughs> when you get down there, there'll be a helicopter pilot waiting for you. Uh, just show him your tribal ID and he'll let you on. <laughs> I was like, there's no way this is going to work. And I went down. I drove down 66. I found the boulder. I took a ride. I went down. There was the guy. There was a the helicopter. I showed him my tribal ID. He said, get in. And I went. <laughs> traveled around in the big girl. She likes to back it up. <laughs> That's my war pony. Shane crashed it. <laughs> Man, Shane and I were out. And we were out in uh, Standing Rock. And, you know, it was rugged. Things happened. We watched
watched people get beat up. We watched our relatives get. We watched them get sprayed with water cannons. We watched peaceful protesters be attacked by private militia and bit with dogs. And on the first night we got there, they said, we need arrestables. You know those Lakota's warriors. We need arrestables. And I was like, Shane, are you an arrestable? <laughs> you know, do I look like an arrestable? <laughs>
So I want to acknowledge and ask you all to stand up, all of you that have worked with me. I want to start by acknowledging my family and my students. Please stand up. I want to ask the people that were in my book, that's my mom back there, please say hi to my mom.
share this little story with you. Um, I was lining up different people to be documented and be a part of the project, so I'm on the last set of people, and so I come to, to our dance house to watch my uncle and my cousin be documented and photographed, and she's like, no, I want you in the picture too, and I'm like, me? <laughs> and uh, I wasn't ready, I was, I was dressed, I, I would never wear that outfit. <laughs> I had no makeup on, I had no regalia, no cap, no beads, no anything. And she's like, no, I want to be a part of this. And I'm like, man, I'm looking ghetto, man. I'm just like, so she existed, and so we did, I ended up being a part of a project, and it was, it was really empowering and powerful. And it's amazing because uh, I didn't know, I had heard that I was in her TED Talk as well, and people had said this over the years, like, I saw you. Take his work in that Project 562 on this TED Talk. I'm like, oh, really? And I'd never seen it. I'd never seen it until like a month ago. My kids are taking a class at Humble State University or Cal Poly Humble. And so I sat down to watch it. It was part of their project to study um, Atika's work. And I'm like, oh, I want to check this out. And so then I ended up being in this video. And I was like, wow, I, I, now I know what people are talking about. You know? I was like, you know, and I was just like, it's just interesting, you know. And then there was another project up in Bend, Oregon that someone had mentioned. And, it's just been one of these things that has happened to be a, it was a fluke, you know, to be a part of it. And to be humble and to walk um, in the footsteps of my family and my grandmother especially, <coughs> is so vital to me. <laughs> She's about to breathe. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's been a healing um, to have Matika's work celebrated around the whole world. I mean, it's so empowering to see us the living people because you know like I get comments all the time about my together there you know they're like oh is that real or who are you or are you a vampire or you know, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm serious it's interesting the conversations I've had with people um, I've experienced a lot of racism with this uh, mark and when I got it like 11 years ago it was it was a uh, I was awakening with my grandmother that asked her for permission and I said, Grandma, look at my marks, because I always want to get them since I was around eight years old. <clears throat> and she said, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> my grandma, what the heck? Why are you saying that? And she never explained to me why she, why she didn't want me to do them. And then I, I was like, nah, I'm still going to do it. So um, there are marks that we carry in recognition of it's our identity. It's our, it's our beauty and our strength and our um, connection to who we are. And that's directly, your, you can wear the marks of your family. So these are my third great grandmas on my dad's side of the family on his <clears throat> on my grandmother's, my dad's mother's side, so it's my paternal side, but on my Europe blood. And uh, it's been, so I come back home on my mom's side, the family where I was raised with my grandma and my Talo blood, and she cried, and she's like, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, why didn't you want me to get them? I never asked her to, because I just went in and did it without permission. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and so when I got home from DC, I had um, Keone Nunez, he's the, one of the last Hawaiian tattoo mm -hmm. artists, um, he was the one that put them on me. And so we had a big old ceremony over there, which I found got recognized for our language program, so we were all over there. So it was like 10 of us, so we were like, you know, had a big old ceremony for it. And so when I got home, my grandma just cried, and she's like, oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. But she goes, I didn't want you to get them because I didn't want you to experience what I experienced as being an Indian woman, the full-blooded, you know, woman who spoke her language and ate her food, and those kinds of things. So it was a healing for her and with <clears throat> But anyway, um, being a total woman this day and age has really empowered me to like even live even more. Experiencing the things I've had experience with different people and explaining, like sometimes I don't take all the time I need to with some people who are really ignorant. <laughs> Those are probably the people I really should spend time with, but they're really ignorant, I don't spend time with them. But I have a lot of people come in and, and ask about them and stuff, and I like take the time to explain them to them. And I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, Matika has really impacted us um, putting us on the map of who tall people are because when ethnographers came through um, our area, it was all about Yurok, and that's my dad's family. <laughs> it was like, they have rings and rings about Yurok and Hupa. And we're uh, a Dinaid speaking people, we're like Athabascan speaking, or that's the old term of linguistics. Um, and so we got sort of missed on the mark on there, but um, it's really empowered us, and we're really honored to be a part of this project. And it, has, it shows our resiliency and that we're still here. And, um, I'm looking forward to sharing her curriculum in our school district and having her come and share it in our community, hopefully in July, and um, we're really looking forward to it. Um, so 
Um, anyway, I want to say about our survivors, um, it's living in, as, as well as we can as people who are earth-based, you know, celebrating our ceremony and, and uh, the songs we're going to be sharing tonight are from our World Renewal Ceremony. Um, it's honoring Earth. It's a 10-day ceremony, which is around five days right now, but uh, pre-contact was 10 days. And by the time we got done praying, we have prayed for every single thing, living and non-living around the whole entire world. And it wasn't just for Taliban people, it's not just for Indian people, it's for all of us. All of us. It takes all of us to make this medicine. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're just coming to be a part of the dance, if you're a regalia maker, if you're making the medicine and fasting for the medicine, if you're dancing, that's all of it. If you're bringing the food, that's all of it. And so that is so important because we're human beings. We're all human. We're all human beings. And that's what we all have in common. And we need to keep that alive and really respect the earth is, is what um, I wanted to share as well. Anyway. Um, we're going to go ahead and share a couple songs. We have singers over here, dancers over here. So, uh, the first song. Um, usually, women sit when they sing, but I'll stand, it's not a problem. Um. Slums chillate and tail up into the dollar. Hey, I know, hey, I know, hey, I know, hey, I hail, hey, I slums chillate and tail up into the dollar. Hey, I know, hey, I hail. Hey, I know, hey, I hail, hey, I know, hey, I hail, hey, I know, hey, I hail, hey, I hail, hey, I hail, hey, I hail, hey, just five months. Big boy. He weighed eleven nine when he was born. <laughs> he never stopped growing. Hey, no. 
Thank you to everyone. Big round of applause. 